the All Blacks have uh, won the toss. There is Andy Hayden, and uh, they are all, each of them, All Blacks in their own rights, but uh, they're all New Zealanders too, so we'll call them New Zealanders today. There is uh, Clamp, that's Grant Fox, that's Mark Shaw there. They won the toss. Craig Green, but they haven't decided yet which way they're going to play. Murray Mix did. Tika Reed, Shelford, that's Gary Knight, the most capped front row they've ever had. There is big Andy Hayden, 35 years old, a veteran of 41 tests. And now they go to try to decide which way to play. There are no changes in the two teams. And everyone, we're told, is 100% fit. And any moment from now, we'll hear the roar as the Springboks run onto the field. There is Lars Puerta and the referee, Mr. Ken Rowlands of Wales. A very good, very strict referee. Gunny Briot, vice captain of the side today. Big Cliffy Van Amerva, Skalkberger, Lee Moorman, there's Val Bartman. Ted Small was behind him. Danny Ferber with the ball. That's Carlo Duplessis. John Kionis at the back. Well, there you can see the flags. The wind is pretty strong, but it's across the field, so a difficult decision. Dave Stewart and I were discussing earlier on which way would you play, Dave? Do you think they've made the right decision? But right now, yes, interesting, so, they're yes. changing over. They've changed their minds. The North All Blacks are going to play from the left to the right. They're going to defend, that is, the northern end of the ground. End. Yes, I would, have, I would have played the way they took the field first, quite honestly. I would have played into the wind. But it was noticeable in the curtain raise that the kicks weren't as affected as I thought they might be. So the, the wind is almost straight across the field right now. So difficult a decision. And there you get the team. It's possible that Simpson and Taylor may have changed their numbers. Yes, uh, I've just noticed that Victor Simpson is number 13 and uh, Warwick Taylor is number 12. Otherwise, they're exactly as they are. The same pack of forwards who played so well against Western Province only on Tuesday. There is the Springbok team with a lot of new caps, Jaka Reiner, Christopher Ferreira, and of course, all three loose forwards, Val Bartman, Kurt Smollin, and Annie Briet. And any moment from now, we'll have the kickoff. Referee says, are you ready? And there we go. Here in Crowley, it was a kicked off. Under it, Louis Moorman tapped it back there to Christopher Ferreira. And straight into touch. You're not going to hear the sounds from the referee today because the referee Mr. Rowland says it's a new concept these field ears and he don't, doesn't feel that it's a good time to try them out in a big game like this first line out and there's Grant Fox good work by Murray Mix in that line out a difficult one for Nars Boyd to take by Craig Green and Craig Green got a score no he hasn't the touch judge the touch judge's flag is up that was very very close but the referee has said it was offside anyway and he is asking the Springboks what they want. Do they want a penalty from where the man was involved or a, here it is. There we see it again. Now watch Fox's kick. And you'll see that Green has definitely stolen a few meters on him there. In fact, he surprised everybody. The Springboks didn't expect him to be there. I don't think he expected himself to be so far ahead. He just couldn't disguise it. But uh, Nars Buerta very quickly across in defense. So the first scrum of the match and that's Christo Ferreira and a penalty and last word is quite interesting last word of taking a place kick he did that so often in New Zealand in 1981 because he does get more accuracy and we've had a lot of rain overnight the conditions I think are those that the All Blacks might almost have chosen heavy underfoot it's very long grass and I've just had a note passed that what Ken Rowland said in his typical Welsh action. He said before wearing those field ears, he says, I love to clear up my language first. I'm sure he didn't mean that because uh, he is a very fine referee, but it is quite an experiment having those field ears, as they call them. Penalty there for fringing, as they call it, coming around in the wrong side of the ruck there, following the line. Grant Fox to take it. 
And this is unusual, a quick one. Not, doesn't go to hand, goes to Victor Simpson. Simpson has got Mark Shaw there. And there's the first ruck of the game. In goes Gary Knight. And back it comes to Grant Fox. Good work by Andy Donald. Kiernas under it. Johan Kiernas. Up and under. He'll have to get put his fours on side under Ashworth. Picked up by Murray Pierce. Good work by Cowboy Shaw there. Driving in over the... Look at that rucking. That is the New Zealand style of play. Andy Donald waiting for it. Frank Shelford going in. Hicker Reed. And a penalty to the New Zealanders for preventing the ball coming out in that ruck. Mr. Ken Rowland demonstrating why the kick, kick was given. And is Grant Fox going to go for the posts? Yes. Grant Fox, who has had a most distinguished career in 1984, he played his first international against Fiji. And in that 84 season, he set up an Auckland record of 301 points in a season. And he's also got a career record. In only 46 matches for Auckland, he scored 576 points. Has played centre as well as by half. Or in New Zealand language, his first 5 eighths and second 5 eighths, Dave. Yeah, tremendous pressure on Grant Fox here because I think a lot of his selection was due to his being such an accurate goal kicker. On, as a player, he and Wayne Smith, I, I would feel Wayne Smith probably has the edge on him. Well, here's the important kick. It's got all the distance. And it's there. Three points ahead after. There it is. Four minutes gone. And uh, the New Zealanders are leading by that penalty by Grant Fox. Very important advantage, Dave. Yes, and that happened in a mall. So, you know, the Springboks, whatever method they're using, Mr. Rowlands hasn't liked it so far. Good work by Scott Berger, tapping it back, and Anton Barnard is there trying to get it back. Christopher Ferreira, advantage has the referee, Michal Duplessis, up and under, chasing it, Donny Herba, well taken there by Simpson. And Victor Simpson driving forward, a very vigorous physical ruck there. Interesting to see how quick the referee was to stop that ruck from developing. The ball was not going to emerge. Yes. Donny Herba misjudged that up and under, very good up and under from Michal Duplessis and actually was past it and underneath it when it landed. And the spring of the heel the ball being held in the back row by Yanni Briet. Christopher Ferreira dummying, but picked up by Yanni Briet. Back to Gert Small, Michal Duplessis, Nas Buerta with it. And that's the rolling kick, didn't go where he wanted it to. And Kieran Crowley comes for Kaponga Taranaki, does Kieran Crowley. Not his best touch kick. He's a pretty safe player. Referee insisting that there's a meter between each player and the half meter gap between the two lines. Willie Schmidt throwing in for the first time in a big match. Taken by Luan Wolman cleanly. Ferreira, Nas Buerta. Is it a drop goal attempt? It was, but it's wide, very wide. Difficult one for Crowley being chased up there. Crowley gets away with it. Managed to get his kick in. Jakob Reinach was there. Murray makes that in to try and help Crowley. Well, there was a good indication of the crosswind. That kick of Nice started off about 10 meters outside the right hand upright and actually landed pretty near the corner flag. Yes, as you say, it is a very strong crosswind blowing towards the railway touchline. And that line out over there is on the railway stand side. So a lot of the play will be on that side, one imagine. Good work by Murray Pierce for the New Zealanders. We'll be waiting for the ball to emerge. And Uli Schmidt who came away with it on the far side, but booted on there by Mark Shaw and Andy Donald. Kiernis falling on, attack by Shelford. Picked up by Ferreira and his kick charged down. Well, certainly the... New Zealanders are hustling the Springboks and really they haven't got into their stride in any way. That's Donny Ferba. 15 caps, holder of the South African record of 14 tries in test matches. Back of the line out, Yanni Breit with it. Good support there, but back it comes, Pereira. Murray makes it under it and 
Warwick Taylor going in. Warwick Taylor with it. Andy Donald out to Fox. Fox to Simpson. And Nasworth is there for the kick. Will it drift into touch? No, Crowley. Crowley getting a difficult ball there. Plenty of time. And that's a long kick by Kieran Crowley. But the wind is bringing it in. Nasworth under it. With him is Kiernis. And Nasworth making very certain to get the ball into touch there. Kicking against the wind. Nasworth had one of his best games that I've ever seen him play last year in the teeming rain here against uh, Western Province. So Hika Reed, that's the that's Kat Small. Deep one there, Yanni Brett had it, but he lost it and knocked it forward. That'll be a New Zealander's ball. Mark Shaw going down on this side, he's number six. Had a great game here on Tuesday. Scrum is not steady. Referee interesting going around the other side to see if there's any collapsing of the scrum. Last on the whistle. He wants them to bind properly. Mr. Ferreira being harassed there by Andrew Donald. Good kick by Nas. Crowley confronted by Carl Duplessis and scragged Val Bartman in there. Helped by Gert Small. And it's going to be the New Zealanders' ball. Fox out to Simpson. Simpson trying to pick up Shelford. And they get the ruck again. Andrew Donald. But a high tackle, says the referee. Penalty against the Springboks. Murray makes it number eight there. But he's as tough as they come. Big man from Wellington. Grant Fox. Hasn't found touch. Nas Buerta. Plenty of time. And that shows again how this wind is so strong across the field. Nas Buerta captaining the Springboks for the first time. He's captained Northern Transvaal on 51 occasions. And here's the first short lineup. That's as interesting. I haven't seen the New Zealanders doing this in any other. Andy other Hayden at number eight. And Mexted with it now. Murray Mexted. Tackled there by Michael Duplessis. And it's going to be the New Zealanders' ball. Fox out of Warwick Taylor. Simpson. Kick being chased by Craig Green. But Reinach is there. Green trying to keep it in, keeping it in well. Yes, yes. And doing the cleaning up there was Michael Duplessis. Who had. Ten minutes gone, and the score, 3-0 to the New Zealanders. A penalty by Grant Fox. New Zealand obviously worried about the line-outs. They've had Andy Hayden at number eight, twice the line-outs now, and they've called a short line-out to very play. Nice put under a lot of pressure from Warwick Taylor and Andrew Donald. And that up and under there by Craig Green. Anton Barnard, Paul Bartman helping. Uh, very physical ruck there. Chaps getting really stuck. With Louis Mulman. Ball to be put in by Andrew Donald. He comes from Wanganui. He's a farmer there. One of the most beautiful parts in New Zealand with a lovely Wanganui River meandering down from the mountains. Andrew Donald, who's played seven tests. Here's Grant Fox. And that's a good up and under. Kunis is going to get the man and the ball at the same time. Warwick Taylor's there. Simpson was there too. Mark Shaw picking it up. But a knock forward. Oh, a very awkward fit for Hyannis there, landing it dead on the 22-meter line. Those are the tough ones to take because you're not sure whether you can mark or not. And Warwick Taylor up very quickly. Met Warwick Taylor's parents this morning. They come from Waikato. Uh, following the tour, Warwick Taylor's from Canterbury himself, been a regular in the New Zealand test team. Ball held there. And good kick by Nasquarter. Now, Nasquarter is trying to 
start controlling this game. But he's got to get good ball. Another short line out. That's uh, wing Mike Clamp. Also from Wellington. Now, Andy Hayden in the back of the line out again. This is interesting. And there he goes for it. But Yanni Breert is there equal to it. Ball knocked back. New Zealanders ball. Fox with it. Out to Simpson. Simpson nearly slipped a tackle there, but Paul Bartman was in there. Michael Duplessy as well. And the Springboks ball. Well taken there by Michael Duplessy. Out to his brother, Cardinal, but not a great pass. Michael Duplessy, who's a dentist. Brother Cardinal's a student. There was big Murray Pierce there. John Ashworth in the front of the line out. Behind him, Andy Tate, Hayden. And the great Gary Knight between Hayden and Murray Pierce. Where's it going? Going to the back. Well taken by Gert Small. But the referee says the ball will not emerge. And the Springboks were guilty of killing the ball. So the New Zealanders. Here's an, another indication. You've got to stay on your feet. Small took that ball with two hands and uh, probably lacking a little bit of support. He went to ground and immediately South Africa have to lose the ball. Next dead. Got Andrew Donald with him. And will they get second place? Shaw is in there. Cowboy Shaw doing very good work. Trying to get it back. But the referee says it, it will not emerge. And giving the ball to the New Zealanders. Which means they were not responsible for the breakdown in play. Andrew Donald. Out to Grant Fox. Missing out a man, Simpson with it. Misses out again, and to Green. Craig Green, and he Green on the inside. Craig Green, good cover defence though. Well picked up by Donald over there. But Jacka Reinach with it. And Jacka Reinach, here's the flyer. Jacka Reinach, holder of the South African 400 metres record at 45.01 seconds. He still has that record. And I think you'll agree, 45.01 is pretty swift though. And a very fine tackle in midfield there, bringing down Craig Green in full flight. Well, it was a joint tackle, but Hearnes played the main role. He took a hard knock there, but what a great tackle. He and Hed Small actually pulled him down. And Craig Green, of course, has had a fantastic record on this tour. He's play played in only two matches up till now and scored five tries. He's got ten test matches behind him. Comes from Lincoln in Canterbury. In fact, there are quite a few Canterbury chaps in the back line with Craig Green, Warwick Taylor and Simpson. They're all teammates. So they obviously know each other's play very well indeed. Here's the team talk. And the New Zealanders are really motivated for this match. And the applause you heard was for Val Bartman getting a new pair of pants and showing he had a bright scarlet pair of under rods on. Well, it all adds a bit of colour to the proceeding. Gunny Breer tapping it over Shelford with it. And uh, Shaw, Mark Shaw chasing two. Look at that par. The guy from from Manawatu. Out it comes to Fox. Taylor. Taylor in a gap. This could be very dangerous indeed. He's got a man with him. He just couldn't get it to Mike Clamp. And here's the drive. Is it a try? They're trying to drive their way over. But the referee said there was a little knock on there. And the Springboks got out of jail there. It was a lovely break by Warwick Taylor. He had Mike Clamp with him. Today was an ex-international centre. You would have been proud of that break, I guess. Yes, I think, though, that perhaps, you know, after the break where they nearly went over, Hika Reid might have, that one should have slipped to their back line going left because the Springbank backs were committed to defence in midfield there. I think Craig Green might have got away on the left. But Hika Reid went for the line. Well, it's a Springbank ball, and Uli Schmidt has never had a more important job than to get this ball back for the Springboks. And, of course, Hika Reid will want to get a tight hit here. That's when you need him, on your opponent's line or on your own. And it's a solid scrum. Everyone diving into the ball. There can be no hands in scrum once the ball's over the line. And the referee wants a five-metre scrum with the New Zealanders' ball. So the New Zealanders with a very good position. In five metres from their opponent's line. It's their ball. They've got Ashworth on the loose head there. Hika Reid hooking. And they've got the ball being held by Mexted. And it's left to Mexted, to Warwick Taylor. That was a good little move with Donald going right without the ball and a penalty for offside there. The ball was still in the scrum and the Springbok 
Loose forwards had broken up and they were in front of the last line of feet in that scrum. And a golden opportunity. Grant Fox will probably kick a ball over from this position 99 times out of 100. Interesting there what the New Zealanders did. The New Zealand backs where you would normally split the centres and have one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. They had both, both of their centres on the right-hand side out here indicating that they were going to move right and then pulled the dummy move with Mexted playing the role of strum off going on the open side. But I thought Christo Ferreira did very well. He picked it up and made the tackle on, on Warwick Taylor coming round. Well, this is rather like a half-metre putt. It's so easy, but you can miss them. Concentration. No, no mistake there. Six points to nil. New Zealand is leading. There you can see it, 18 minutes gone in the first half. And that is a very good lead to get. Let us say the wind is not favouring either side. It's across the field. And it's pretty strong. I would say slightly in favour of the New Zealanders, Chick. Especially down that far touchline. Right, and it can swing, Dave. Well, last quarter. Kick off, that's a good one. Under it is Murray Pierce, but first was Kalkberger tapping it back. Christopher Ferreira with an awkward one. Val Bartman, number six, playing his first international match. Short line out, Flippy Panamerva and Val Bartman breaking back. And Gary Knight for the New Zealand. There's Ashworth. Behind him is Murray Pierce. First saw Murray Pierce playing in the trials last year in Vicargill. He was picked for the two tests against England and the two against Australia. Played very well in atrocious conditions. Carl Duplessis, challenged by Mike Clamp, and uh, tried to get his rolling kick in. Picked up by Gary Knight. Kicker readers there too. And there's the laying it back. Murray Pierce, Donald with it. Up and under. Donald is putting his guys on side. But picked up by Uli Schmidt. But before that, a knock forward. Referee, Mr. Ken Rowlands of Wales, very much on the ball. Very fit, always there. Andrew Donald to put in. And New Zealanders with a lovely scrum. Low, but delay. A free kick given, not a penalty, for a delay in putting the ball in. Last word to try and get it much length. There you can see the strength of the wind. He's getting Yanni Breit just to stop the ball from being blown over and there is uh, the touch so we have had now uh, 20 minutes in this match and the All Blacks or the New Zealanders who we try to call them leading six points to nil two penalties by Grant Park six to the New Zealanders nil to the Springboks there is Skalkberger into the back of the line out behind him is Val Bartman. Nick Reed to throw in midway between the New Zealanders 22 and the halfway line. And a penalty for obstruction in the line out. You can see the gesture of the referee saying there was pushing and shoving in that line out. This is interesting. Both, both penalties have been against South Africa, for South Africa for pulling in the line out and pushing and uh, the feeling beforehand and the questions asked of Mr. Rowlands in the radio interviews that I've heard have all been asking him what he was going to do about the all-black pushing and pulling. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes. And uh, there were complaints also about the lifting in the line-outs that the Springboks method of, of uh, supporting, as they call it, is illegal. And I think the, that is correct. You may not get supported until one of the line-out forwards has touched the ball. And the Springboks do tend to come in a bit quicker. But Mr. Rowland said he was going to get around that by insisting on that metre gap between the players. If you stay a metre away until the ball is touched, then you can't obviously support until that ball has landed in the lineup. You'll now check that Andy Hayden's at number eight again. Yeah, and he nearly took it, but just tapped back. And there, Ferreira's kick charged down by Murray Pearson. That's good second phase ball. Ron Fox, Warwick Taylor trying to slip his man. Picked up there by Gianni Brett. Out and that was Nas Buerta dodging Mike Clamp. That was a neat little bit of work. And this big crowd, they hate Nas Buerta when he plays against Western Province, but when he plays for the Springboks, they love him. 
I think there's no doubt he won them over in that game he played here for Northern Transvaal in the wet last year when he really gave a masterly display in the wet. Yes, an incredible display where he never made a mistake with a wet, greasy ball. And there is... <laughs> holding down in the line-outs. And now Spurda is going to try a long-range kick at goal. Well, Dave, the wind will probably not stop this kick. He'll have to aim outside the left post, I would say. Uh, and I think, too, check up, you know, we've got a north stand at Newlands here, which shields this one corner, and I think perhaps it's fairly still in the area in which he's, which he's kicking into right now. Well, he's pushed it, and it's short as well. Grant Fox under it. Grant Fox dodging a man, dodging Reinach, and ball kicked by Mike Clamp, by uh, Green, rather. Kiernis with it. And Kiernis is kick charged on by Craig Green. In goes Flippy van der Merwe and a penalty, I think. What will the referee say? Yeah, coming into the wrong side of the scrum. Penalty against Flippy van der Merwe there. Andrew Donald having a word with Grant Fox. And Grant Fox has decided to have a go. Murray makes it always interesting. Goes right across to the far touchline. What a great tour he's had. Great character, great personalities, Murray makes it. It's a totally different approach by the New Zealanders in the in their 22 meter area there after Nice's kick at goal. They immediately look for an, a, ch a chance to move the ball down the left and get Craig Green away. And you know all that it happens in different ways. It happened with a uh, with a kick charge down here. They finished up in the South African half of the field. So, you know, nice to see a bit of adventure paying off. Yeah, they've played enterprising stuff right from the beginning and I must say the big crowds here have really loved these New Zealanders. We're concentrating very hard not to call them all blacks, but <laughs> it's difficult not to because each of these players is an all black in his own personal capacity. And it's a long kick, it's a beautiful kick, and it's there, yes, a third in a row. Three out of three from Grant Fox. That was truly a great kick because he fought for quite a long while before he decided to go for goal. So he must have been a little worried from that position whether he could get the distance or not. Well, that's a substantial lead. Murray Pierce taking it well out of the air there. And uh, he is brought to ground immediately. And the referee said Murray Pierce was responsible for the breakdown in place. So it'll be the Springboks ball. There he is, Murray Pierce. Big man from Wellington. Take a read. Still to get his head down in the scrum there. You can read from the Bay of Plenty. Christopher Herrera, the little man trying to push this man mountain of bodies. The referee suggests let's all stand up and start again. Grant Fox certainly justified his selection thus far, Chick. Well, three out of three is a good three. record anywhere. Not a very good pass there. And here's the rain coming down. This could make a big difference to the game. Back for it is Mark Shaw. Left-footed kick. He hasn't found touch. He's found Christopher Ferreira. Ferreira has Nas Puerta with him. But gives it to Willie Schmidt. Willie Schmidt barging his way through. Flips it back to Ferreira. Nas Puerta. That is Diplessy. Out to Kiernis in the line. Donny Kerba. Kerba well tackled by Simpson. Back to Michal Diplessy. Michal Diplessy back inside to Jekka Reiner. And a good tackle by... Uh, He's opposite number green, and the Springboks very cross there. They thought there was an advantage, but the referee's whistle had gone. See the crowd there with the umbrellas coming up and the overcoats, and it is raining hard now. Back to Grant Fox, challenged by Nas Puerta. Back for it is Kiernis. Difficult ball. Kiernis chased by Warwick Taylor, and directly out on the ball. And it's a hazard of the business here in Cape Town that uh, when it rains, your commentators get wet. It's a lot better than it used to be, Chick. We've yes, got a we've little got bit of, uh, a little bit of a perspective above us. So attention there to John Kiernis. It was a lovely bit of rugby from the Springboks. Really some very, very good passing. And just a pity, Walbach well, must have moved that ball an inch forward, I think, because we had the Springbok backline lined up going left here, and I think they had an overlap. 
Yeah, it was an opportunity. And that's what makes the difference in these big games. You've got to take those half chances. You see the crowd of jam packed there. Probably if you put up an umbrella, you might have struck someone's view behind. So we've had 27 and a half minutes in this match. And it is the New Zealanders, New Zealand Cavaliers, leading by nine points to nil. Three penalties, all kicked by Grant Fox. And the Springboks have had two goes at goal, a drop missed by Nasbord and a penalty that was short. A messy line out there. He makes it coming through, but nice Puerto with it from Ferreira. And in the rain, a pretty good kick, but that's the way the wind is blowing, so you can afford to make it a long one down the touchline and let the wind take it into touch. Andy Hayden gone back to his normal position, and mixed it number eight at the back. The shelter behind him. Just on the... Zealanders 10 meter line. Murray Pierce tapping it back there. But penalty says the referee for obstruction in that line. So there have been quite a number of penalties in the line out, but I think the referee is probably not taking any chances of getting things out of hand. A nice word over the call for a mark, I think. Yeah. Free kick given for the fair catch. Well, it's quite a good mark by Northwood. The right thing to do with the other players bearing down and there's next hit with it. Very next hit. Uh, they'll get it from second place. Whenever next hit goes in with the ball, he manages to lay it back. This time the referee has said it was certainly not the New Zealanders who were responsible for stopping play there. So it's the New Zealanders ball. If anyone's got a law book back home, you look at Law, law 20.7, Law 22.3. Very clear. And I think Mr. Rowlands is applying the law very well. There are the statistics, line outs. Pretty even. But the Rucks, the New Zealanders just ahead. But I might say they've got the Rucks, they've got have been very good ones. Good, clean. Good second phase position. That's a good up and under. Kearnas under it. Does he call for a mark? Yes. Mark given. Warwick Taylor very up, very quickly up there to make the tackle. Jan Kearnas with a good kick. And he used the wind well there. He hoisted the ball up parallel with the touchline. There he is, Jan Kearnas. He was a lawyer. John Hennis has, has, has had a good first half. He hasn't really made a mistake yet. He's, he's played well. They've pressurized him. It wasn't a good up and under the last run. It carried too far, but he made no mistake, and he's really put them right back into the New Zealanders' half. Yes, he's, he played well in New Zealand in 81 in a lot of wet conditions there, so he's had the experience. And that is Craig Green with it. Another up and under. Under it is Yanni Briert, and it's a ball bounce. Flips it there to Gert Small. Now to Nasburta. Michael Diplessy changes his mind and plugs the other touch. And that's quite a good kick. Murray Mextead back for it. Chasing up is Jaka Reinach. And Mextead managed to save the situation with Reinach wanting to boot it ahead and use this tremendous speed to chase up and try to get that elusive try. Yes, another meter there, and that could have been points. It was Kieran Crowley was way over on this side of the field, anticipating the Springboks coming a look across towards Carl Dupasee's wing. And Michael Dupasee stopped and kicked it straight back. And Louis Moulman grabbing the ball there for the Springboks. But the referee says it's a pile-up. The Springboks ball. Just outside the New Zealanders' 22-meter area. Christo Ferreira, little man from the Free State, also a lawyer. And uh, Nas Puerta taking an awkward one, but he's kicked it too far. It's gone over the try line, and back for it is Kieran Crowley with plenty of time to dot it down. 
Kieran Crowley, who equaled Don Clark's record of 18.6 penalties in a test. Don Clark, of course, living in Johannesburg, South Africa at the moment. And one sees him quite often. He's still as keen as ever on his rugby. He's helped with coaching the schoolboys. And what a great guy he is. Brother of Ian Clark, who I had the pleasure of playing against some years ago. Back it comes to Warwick Taylor. And Andrew Donald's had a good game so far. Yes, and just looking at this first half, the first half, half an hour of play, I'd say that if there's an influence on the game, is the fact that the Springboks haven't been able to control the ball often enough. Yeah. Well, this is a dangerous play with Donny Kerber in the gap. Kerber going through, but he's got the cover defence to deal with. Gunny Brett is there to help him. The Springboks will want this from second phase. Val Bartman is there, and Anton Barnard. But the referee says the ball will not emerge. And uh, the Springboks trying desperately to get the ball alive and get it back. Now they'll have the foot in. And it's in a good situation. It's in front of the New Zealanders' 22-meter area. Just in line with the left hand upright. One center standing each side. And drop goal attempt. No, out to Michal Duplessis. There's Kionis in the line, but he runs into Andy Hayden and Simpson. Ball is loose back to the Springbok side. Michal Duplessis out to Nas Buerta, And a penalty for offside in that ruck. Mr. Rowland's a little hasty there. I see Donny Kerber really champing at the bit. He, he could and Jocko Runner for the way there, I'm almost sure. Yeah, he certainly could have waited for advantage there because the whole Springbok back line were going. As you see, Donny Kerber had the ball. He had Reinach outside him. And uh, for the first time in this game, the New Zealanders a bit of sixes and sevens there. The last word, it won't be short. And he's made no mistake, and it's 9-3. As you can see, 34 minutes gone, and uh, the New Zealanders leading by three penalties, two one penalty. Well, there's two good bits of possession in a row there with the Springboks, and as soon as they do that, the Springbok backs are, are able to pressurize the New Zealand backs. Uh, Donny Herber almost slipped through a moment ago. So possession is going to become all important in this game. Well, they say it's nine points to the law, and the other bit of news we've got is that rain has stopped at the moment, but the ground is heavy, the ball is wet, and that is Scott Berger who's taken it. There's a bit of driving from the Springboks for a change. And now they'll Val Barton with it, letting it come back. Warwick Taylor was in there. That's a good little kick ahead by Ferreira. And uh, Val Barton chasing it again. Michael Duplessis getting caught up in the thick of things. And the referee wants to tidy things up and have a set scrum. I couldn't help but feel that, that the Springboks were very tentative in that first 20 minutes and they, they're definitely coming into the game now. There's a lot more aggression about their play and commitment. They had a good drive from that kickoff. Well, remember, there's six of these Springboks who've never played in a, in a test match before, so there's not much experience in the back row of the scrum. None of them have ever played in the test. Kieran Crowley challenged by Carl Duplessis. Has he got his touch? No, he has, yes. Midway between the New Zealanders 22 and the halfway line. The South Africa calling their first short liner. Yeah, that's interesting. And Uli Schmidt having a word with the scrum half. Christopher Ferreira. Louis Moorman tapping it back. Picked up by Gert Small, but Shelford has a hand round the ball. And uh, this is a tremendous ruck. The referee very quick to decide the ball will not emerge. Left for play in this half about four minutes. 9-3, the New Zealand is leading. Andrew Donald, held by Mexted. Donald deciding to kick himself. Kunis outside his 22. Decides he wants to kick directly into touch. And it's a good kick. Murray Mexted was there, but the ball was in touch first. That was a great bit of rugby from Kunis. He actually slipped as he was taking the ball and recovered it so well. I mean, he's kicked a 35-meter touch. Uh, fantastic from that position. The referee checking on that meter gap between the players. Hayden at two, Murray Pierce at four, makes it at the back. Where will Hickory throw it in? And Andy Hayden tapped it back, but it's been tapped again. Hickory through very quickly. And Christopher Herrera managing to boot it out of touch.
goes Scott Berger for it, but the referee said obstruction. And it indicated to Andy Hayden the lineout before that they were getting too close in the lineouts. Very flamboyant is uh, the referee, <laughs> Mr. Rollins. He certainly lets everyone know what the penalty is for. It's a very long one. Oh, and he's not going for the post. He and it's a magnificent. No, he hasn't found his touch. And all Kieran Crowley's got to do is dot it down. 22 dropout. Craig Green thinking better of it. I thought he was going to try a quick one there. And back it goes to Grand Fox. The wind, if anything, has died down a little bit. John Fox. Uh, hanging wall, Louis Mulman taking it. Here comes Mars Puerta. Took it very well. It wasn't a good pass. Carabao, that's good to see with it. Missing out of man. Up his brother, Cardo. Being chased by Mike Clamp. Back inside. And picked up there by Warwick Taylor. Warwick Taylor and Johnny Carabao just getting acquainted there. And I must say, Warwick Taylor has had a very good game indeed. He's an absolute tiger in defence. Christopher Herrera, good one to Nasporta. And there's a drop goal attempt. I think it's there. Yes, a drop goal by Nasporta. Well, that was a lovely bit of rugby from the Springboks. They had a beautiful line movement. They all handled well. Nas took a beautiful catch at Clive. They got Coddle away, managed to keep the ball in, and... and there it is now. You'll see the line at a very quick line out. That was the point I was making. Watch Nas right in midfield, almost opposite the poles. And what a magnificent kick. What a player. Well, that's made a very big difference from 9 0. It's now 9 6, with the New Zealanders leading by three penalty goals to a drop goal and a penalty goal. Grant Fox having scored all the points. That's Kieran Crowley kicking off. John Fox with the points for the New Zealanders and Nas Puerta with the ball now who's got all the points for the Springboks. And on our stopwatch we have five seconds off 40 minutes. 40 minutes gone now in this match so we're in the extra time that the referee adds for stoppages. There haven't been many and that ball is taken there. Gary Knight is there but it's flipped back by flank forward Pat Small playing in his first test. The experience in the back row, the loose forwards of the New Zealanders, 67 caps between them, and the Springboks not a single one amongst the three loose forwards. And Mexted to Donald. Dummies back to Mexted, but well tackled. Ball on the ground. And in for it is Val Barkman, Christopher Herrera getting his kick in from just inside his 22 metre dot. Andy Hayden going to the back of the line out again. That's Christopher Herrera from the Free State. Andy Hayden at the back, tapping it back. Well done. Controlled by Mexhead and Ashworth coming round. The referee says he wants a set scrum with the New Zealand ball. Frank Shelford going down on the open side. That's been a close decision between him and Jock Hobbs as who would play. Out it goes to Fox. Fox and Simpson coming through very quickly indeed. Didn't quite take the ball. Referee waiting for advantage. Donny Herber with a long kick. That certainly is advantage. And it skips out on the far side. And Jacko Reiner chases up for it. There's Donny Herber. Holder of a South African record of 14 test match tries. Springbacks in a good position on defence there. With Victor Simpson flying into what might have been a gap. He was obviously confronted by someone because he took his eye off the ball and dropped it. But uh, obviously the, the formation, the swing formation is good right now. The penalty for obstruction. Again. I think it's good that the referee is very strict on uh, the line-out. Yes, I must say, Chick, it's been a very, very moderate, cool first half. You know, maybe the rain's dampened it a bit, but uh, compared to that sort of fiery first half that we saw here on Tuesday, and there is half time. So at half time, it is nine points to the New Zealanders, six to the Springboks, with the nine points, three penalties by Grant Fox, and against that for the Springboks, a penalty by Nasputa, and a drop 
by Nasport. We'll be back for you the second half, but in the meantime, for the moment, it is cheerio from us at Newlands. game 9-6 three penalties to a drop and a penalty well, I think a fair reflection so far uh, if we had to divide the game up I would say that the first 20 minutes belonged to the to the New Zealanders but undoubtedly the second 20 minutes with uh, the Springbok loose forwards coming into the game Springbok's looking a lot more confident and I think they know that they can do it now with the rain still coming down slightly and there's the first ruck of the game and Andrew Donald it was picking it up in the far side Andrew Donald has had a very good game indeed the man from comes from Wanganui that's the halfway line well you see the umbrellas up there so the rain is still coming down it's a heavy ball it's a very heavy field with long grass and 9-6 Murray makes it number 8 doing very good work for the New Zealand that's Mark Shaw going in Louis Mulman going through and going back into his own side number five for the Springboks on the left there's the big Gary Knight there on the far side tight head man who's played more games in the front row than any other New Zealander ever test 34 tests Andrew Donald waiting for it next head and next hit with it now Shaw with it there number six from next head he got it Andrew Donald out to Grand Fox Fox and up and under being chased all the way by Warwick Taylor under it is Carl Duplessis and bounced in the field of play Mike Clamp number 14 running up very quickly for it and it scudded out over in the far side that's Warwick Taylor with his hand that bandage on it Shelford number seven at the back next it number eight Shaw in front of him 67 test caps between the three of those loose forwards and on the Springbok side not a single one amongst the three loose forwards of the Springboks but Nas Buerta nice away he dodged Shelford and next in and hit the lead got his kick in using the foot furthest away from the trouble this Nas has had a very very good uh, first half started off well in the second half again he's handled beautifully in that last move towards the end of the first half he handled twice and the second time was when he picked the drop goal the great thing about Nas is if you watch he very seldom makes a mistake he hasn't made a mistake today at all and he's very quick his record for the 200 meters for schoolboys in northern Transvaal has only just been broken so he's very swift as well that's Shelford going through picked up by Michael Dimpressi and uh, picking up support there in goes Louis Moorman and the referee's whistle goes the referee very quick to stop these rucks if he sees the ball is not going to emerge Ken Rowlands from Wales. Mr. Herrera shadowing his opposite number. That was Grant Fox with the up and under, and that's a pretty good one. Warwick Taylor is up there, and it's taken by Dupassi. Michal given to Gert Small. In goes Slippy van der Merwe, and the re referee says coming in from the wrong side of the ruck there. Penalty to the Springboks. But Michal Dupassi did well there. There's a long kick, hasn't found touch. Crowley ducking back. No, he doesn't go into his 22. Passes to, to Green. Craig Green keeps the ball in play into the hands of Ferreira. Mulman grabs it in front of Ferreira. Ferreira out there. Donny Herba dodges a man. Tackled by Craig Green. In goes Cowboy Shaw to tackle him. And the referee says he wants a set scrum. New Zealand has ball. Well, there we had the New Zealanders again. They keep the ball alive so well that was a good kick from Nas well fielded by Kieran Crowley and instead of sort of rolling it into touch and gaining 10 meters he he set Craig Green up well the sporadic rain seems to have gone away for a moment next head controlling this ball at the back there he's going to decide when it comes up there it went to Shelford Shelford will there's making it available from Donald to Fox good little chip into the box chased by Warwick Taylor but Michael Duplessis is there he's had a good day in defense as Michael Duplessis on the Springbok 22, back it goes there. John Kionis, a big kick. Kieran Crowley, awkward rolling ball. Kieran Crowley from Taranaki, and that's a difficult one for Dani Herba. Didn't go backwards into his own 22, so he can kick directly into touch. And he made certain of his touch. All the experience in the world, Dani Herba. Played so well for the World 15 in the United Kingdom earlier on. 
John Ashworth behind him, Murray Pierce from Wellington. Scott Bergen in the background with a headband on the Springboks. There's Louis Moorman on the left, the big farmer. 20 tests behind him. And tapped back by Yanni Briet. Well, Gert Smold falling on it. Tackled by Andy Hayden, who was at the back of the line out there. Anton Barnard doing good work, trying to grab the ball back. And this is a tremendous rolling ball. And Flippy van der Merwe pulling them all down. The referee says that let's tidy it up and have a scrum. Andy Hayden does, does it a tremendous amount of work. I don't know how he gets in there, but that ball, Small did well. He picked it up in the loose there. Got up onto his feet to create the ball. But how Hayden got around him, I don't know. Hey, Andy Hayden has been described. That's Craig Green with it. So Andy Hayden has been described as charismatic and controversial. But he's a charming chap. 41 tests. He admits to being 35 years old. And there is a low, lovely scrum. The referee wants them to hang on until the ball is available. Now it is. Christopher Herrera just outside the Springbok 22-meter area. Back to Nasbuerta. And he's challenged very quickly there by Craig Green. And a long kick. Hasn't found touch, but it's an awkward angle for the man from Taranaki, Kieran Crowley. Bounces, that shouldn't happen. Back it goes there to Uli Schmidt. Uli Schmidt back to Kionis. Johnny Gerber with it. There's the up and under. Shelford is under it. So is Mexted. Mexted tries to take it. Gerber was up very quickly. Paul Bartman makes the ball available, but I think they've been robbed. And penalty there for jumping into the ruck. The referee had blown his whistle for a scrum, and then you could hear the blast on the whistle where he noticed that was unnecessarily rough play. You're not allowed to go into the ruck with your boots. And see, well, we'll see the, we'll see the spring back forward go, forwards go in. Instead of that ball being put down on the ground, it was actually flicked back and it was kicked through, so it was, a, it was difficult to get it back, you know, where the New Zealanders actually put it on the ground, like almost like scoring a try. And you saw the chap jumping in. I think it was big fluffy fella Melba jumping into that loose ruck. And the penalty, that's Frank Shelford getting a bit of attention from the New Zealanders physiotherapist. And train, interesting when they uh, train. It's the physiotherapist chap who gets them warmed up, gets them to do the right muscles exercises. And uh, it's remarkable how few injuries they've had on this tour. Grant Fox to take it from Auckland and it's a pretty good kick there Bob yes, he's, he's had a useful game too Grant Fox he's played very steadily at times yes, yes he has and three out of three is pretty good when it comes to penalty kicking but Bob, Bob, Bob Bartman laid the ball back there interesting he's one of three lawyers in a side three attorneys Hunus, Christo Ferreira and Val Bartman all with degrees in law and uh, certainly he has developed tremendously when he first played Transvaal, he was guilty often of dying with the ball. He's worked on that very hard, and today he has really been making it available, and he's got over that little problem he used to have. That's quite a, a view of this very packed stand. There are lots of standing room. All these people in the foreground there are actually standing, and earlier on they were standing in the rain. That's Andy Hayden going up for it, but I think this back it comes, and the referee is giving a free kick. That was for closing up at the back of the line. Now, closing up that metre gap before the ball has come in. You know, it's not a penalty, a free kick. And last quarter from his own 22 metre line. And that was a pretty long kick. Touch judge coming into the field of play to see exactly where the ball went out. Touch judge is Mr. Streve Stradom, who is South Africa's uh, referee, who's on the international panel. He's refereed in France and in Scotland. And he handled the game, I thought, very well last Tuesday here at Newlands. John Ashworth in the front, Louis Moorman next to him. Five-man line out. And Murray Pierce tried to get it there. The referee says, coming in from the wrong side of that ruck. Penalty. Grant Fox to take. Yes, they've used the short line outs quite effectively. It's upset the... And it looks as though Shelford has got a problem. I see there's a, 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 a replacement there, and it looks like Hobbs, Jock Hobbs, warming up. And uh, I think that is Frank Shelford leaving the field. He got hurt in that last ruck. That's the 
the team physiotherapist with him. Now they just have to get a doctor to certify that uh, he can't continue. And then we'll see Jock Hobbs coming on the field. Going back for it's Donny Gerber. Very well needed. Back to Nas Buerta. Shows how well they know each other. Chased all the way by Donald. And uh, Nas Buerta plugging the touchline. They actually had uh, Dr. Knight on the touchline there, and they've already cleared. I see Hobbs is out on the field already. Check this. Yes, Jock Hobbs, who has been a natural selection in every whenever he's been available. It was a little surprising to some of us that he wasn't picked in the first place, but Shelford has had some very good games over here. And uh, for tap back to the New Zealand is coming across as Shaw. Mark Shaw, number six there, to try and tidy up. That's Jock Hobbs at the back. There he is, open side wing forward. You'll notice the New Zealanders always play on the open or the blind. South Africa, the only international country who's still, I think, old-fashioned and play left and right. Every other side, the French for the last to do it. Scotland does it as well now. And from that, the referee has said going over the top and a penalty to South Africa. Here is yes, Nasbuerta's chance to level the scores. And there again, Yanni Briet was away. You know, looking very dangerous already onto the 22 meter line, and maybe get Mr. Referee Rollins was a little hasty there. Well, it's a very important kick. This kick could level the scores. And he's hit it well. No, it's to the right of the post, taken by Kieran Crowley. It just drifted away. I think Nas allowed for the wind, and the wind didn't take it. The wind is across from the grandstand, from the side of the camera at the moment to the other side there you see the score three penalties to a penalty and a drop goal John Fox the man who's kicked the penalties for the New Zealanders Andrew Discogberger coming up very quickly there was Murray Pierce picked up there by uh, Ger Small former Western Transvaal player but the referee says no advantage from a previous knock forward and they must scrum with the spring box to put the ball in about uh, seven or eight meters outside their opponents 22 that's the 22 line of the new zealanders in the background Christopher ferreira waiting for it out to nice Buerta. there's a difficult up and under hasn't gone quite far enough forward and it's allowed to bounce michael duplessis picking it up in there is yanni briert Christopher ferreira back to nice here's a drop goal attempt coming and wait for it the referee's well positioned it's there the beautiful drop goal by nice Buerta. and the scores are level Well, that started from a, a very good up and under from, from Nos, which was retained with, by the backs. And here you have Nos from about 35 meters out, directly in line with the posts. Heavy ball and a lot of pressure from Hicker Reed, but what a fine kick. And the referee doing very well to sprint into position. He could see exactly where it went. So nine all the score. And it's coming up very quickly. There was Ashworth. Picked up by Gary Knight. There's the driving of these All Blacks. Ashworth in it again. Murray Pierce is there. And a one flicked out of Jock Hobbs, who was standing wide. And uh, Nasbuerta booting it through. Coming through is not Michal Diblesi. Michal Diblesi is here chasing it. Mike Clamp falling on it. Mike Clamp with it. And he flicks it across. That is Simpson. Victor Simpson with it. Up there is Anton Barnard. And uh, the Springboks trying desperately to get the ball back. But the referee says it will not emerge. And it's the All Blacks to put the ball in. And the crowd really warming to this game. The Springboks playing with more and more confidence. And uh, a lot of commitment but the All Blacks not giving an inch. And there comes the rain again, the rain coming, surging down. Donald with it, back to Kieran Crowley. Crowley, a long kick, is he gonna get touch? Yes, the ball skids away there, Johan Kiernas with it now, but the ball was in touch. That's Crowley. A kick from Nice couldn't have come at a better moment because there were, it's really getting the rain is really coming down now. It's going to get heavier and heavier, and this game is going to become more static if it doesn't. This rain, rain doesn't let up. And the wind, Dave, do you think might change? Well, you know, just looking at it, the rain's coming almost straight down. Check, little swirling. Right, Christopher Herrera up and under. Mike Clamp has it. Mike Clamp back to Crowley in his 22, and he's kicking against this wind now into the hands of Jacko Reinach. Well, Bounce awkwardly. Kiernis with it now. And Kiernis keeping the ball in play. A high one, an awkward one for Grant Fox, but it's gone too far. It's over the goal line, and uh, all he had to do was to dot it down as Jaka Reiner followed up very quickly. That's Jock Hobbs, number 19, the replacement for Frank Shelford. 
Man with the ball is John Fox. Three penalties from three attempts. Ball black. The New Zealand players well behind it. Murray Pierce, number five, grabs it. But the referee's whistle goes and says the Springboks coming in from the wrong side of that ruck. Scott Berger, last man away from it for the Springboks. And Fox will try and kick the crawl as far away from his own 22 meter area as he can. Using that technique that Nasquitter used, as we were saying earlier, in New Zealand. And it's a pretty good kick by Fox. Takes play into, well into the Springbok half of the field. It's pretty chilly here. Andy Hayden at the front of the line out again. He's been turning up at the back quite often. He's the number two. This Pierce that's, that's at four. And tap back to Christopher Herrera. But he, not a very tidy one. And good work there by, followed by Yanni Briet. That's Craig Green with it. Challenged by Val Bartman. Kick into the middle. Coming up very quickly for it is Craig Green himself. Flicks it back to Fox. Fox tackled as he kicks by Yanni Briet. And a long rolling ball. Flicked to Nasquitter by Carl Duplessis. And uh, that's a good kick by Nasquitter. Takes play up just to near the halfway line. There you see the statistics. South Africa having had the better of the lineouts. And the rucks marginally, but the New Zealanders have had very good possession from the rucks. Good second phase, quick possession. Now what will happen in this lineout? Pika Reid throwing in and tap back there by Gert Small, but Jock Hobbs cleaning up. And the referee says it was knocked forward. Set scrum. Number four is Andy Hayden. 19 is Hobbs. That's last with her. You see how wet these fellas' jerseys are. Danny Briet controlling that ball, Christopher Herrera. And that's quite a good chip into the box, being chased all the way by Carl Dibussy. Mike Clamp, it was, it grabbed it in front of Carl Dibussy. Forced out. Here's Carl Dibussy. Uh, two good, good bits of rugby there. Nice little chip from. Uh, from Christo Ferreira and a very good catch by Clamp. Carl Dibble see six tests behind him, 24 years old. He's a student. He was a student, I think he's in the army now. Was at Selimbos. One of the three brothers, all of whom played test rugby. Billy, and of course the two playing today, Michal and Cardell. And Andrew Donald, number nine with a black jersey. Next head, Shaw. It's wonderful to watch the way these loose forwards work together, particularly Sean Mexted. The Mexted was going to pick it up, he's left it to Shaw. Now this time out to Fox. And hasn't found touch. Ron Kiernis, is he going to try up and under? Thought he's going to try a drop goal for a moment. Gone a little bit too far. And Crowley will have plenty of time just to dot it down as Kiernis follows up. 17 minutes gone in this match. Second half, nine all the score. Well, the Springbok loose forwards have done a good job today, Chick. They haven't been intimidated. They've stayed in the game, and, and Willie Schmidt has done well. He caught an up and under just now. I think the commitment's been very good from the Springbok pack. And territorially, the Springboks have had the better of it the last 10 minutes. That was taken by Scott Berger. Back to Christopher Herrera, but the referee said Scott Berger knocked it on slightly. So they must scrum. The New Zealanders 22 meter line in the background, just to the right there. Andrew Donald, John Fox, and I think he kicked that from outside his 22, and it landed in the field of play. Hunus, for a very narrow angle, tried the rolling kick, but it went directly into touch. Mark Shaw, very quick to point out to the touch judge that it must be a line out from the place opposite from where Hunus kicked the ball. You see that Andy Hayden has gone to number to the back of the lineout again. Yes, in it's a, a five-man lineout. Andy Hayden right at the back, and he's marked by Yanni Briet back there, though. Still get it, and that ball tapped, being tapped into the hands of Ashworth coming round, but the referee says it was tapped forward and a Springbok ball. Asika 
a read. You can read the hooker from the Bay of Plenty. Big flippy Panamerva on the left. 139 kilograms. And Christopher Ferreira waiting to get the scrum steady and square. He wants it to break up. The law says you must bind firmly and continuously. I think that's what the referee is not happy about. That's better. And in it goes. Haven't seen a heel against the head from either side so far. And Nasperter, he got a lot of attention from Craig Green there. He hasn't found touch, but I think the ball did it go forward. Yes, the referee on the spot says a knock forward and a strum inside the New Zealanders half of the field by about nine meters. There's an indication of how slippery that ball was. Yes, Charlie doesn't rain, miss too many. Rain really coming down now, yes. Dave, and is looking as if the wind is a bit more in the favour of the okay. Springboks yes, than it very was. very definitely now. And that uh, kick charged down there by Mark Shaw. And as we thought, Chick, that the wind might strengthen later on and the rain come down, it certainly proved to be doing that. There's Ashworth with Hayden behind him. Gary Knight behind him. Where will it come? Louis Moorman tapping it back, but the referee says there's obstruction in the line-out. Well, here is a transfer last word. At the moment, the scores are level. Three penalties to two drops and a penalty, nine all. And this is an important kick for Nasquota. He can put the string box ahead for the first time in this match. That means Nasquota, three attempts, one goal. But I think the first of those perhaps was a little bit far for him in the rain. It, it dropped short. That's got all the distance, but wait for it. Is it straight? Yes, it is. And the string box are leading by 12 points to nine. Well, there are not too many people that kick them over from there in this sort of weather trick. It was a really a wonderful goal kick. Under that sort of pressure, 20 minutes to go in the game, his team at 9 all. What a beautiful kick. It reminds me of the penalty put over in the Curry Cup final to draw the game 6 all for Northern Transvaal against Western Province. And Scott Berger tapping it back there. Very slippery ball. In goes Val Bartman. And a penalty to the New Zealanders against Val Bartman for coming in the wrong side there, playing it after Christopher Herrera had played it forward. And Grant Fox now has an opportunity for him to level the scores. 12-9, the Springboks leaving, leading. And I'm sure that Grant Fox won't be short, but it's a, a slippery ball. It's not easy in these conditions. Well, it was a bit tough on Val Bartman there. That was a bit of a fumble. I think he thought it was going to be caught cleanly, and he had committed himself and had bounced back towards him. These little mistakes that win or lose test matches. Grant Fox has had a magnificent record here. He played for the World 15, which is comprised of a, of a couple of Argentinians here. There are a couple of Welshmen, and he kicked six out of seven on that day. Well, he's. Hit it well, I think he's pushed it slightly to the right of the post, dotted down by Nasperta. Followed up very quickly by Warwick Taylor. So that's the first little mistake that uh, John Fox has made. So even from that distance, Chick, you felt he was forcing a bit there. He's been kicking so smoothly, but that ball is heavy now. The conditions are really, very, very difficult for kicking. And the drop out under it began Andy Hayden. And he was really pushed there, walked by Small, Fat Small, and a fly hack there by Fox, covering. I think he got Flippy van der Merwe with all 139 kilograms of him. Yeah, Flippy van der Merwe is a man mountain. About 300 pounds he weighs, I think it is, in the old-fashioned pounds. So this line out midway between the New Zealanders, 22 in the halfway line. Mr. Ferreira. Doing well to get it back, and Nas using his feet. And uh, Hunus having to come in there. Difficult one for him. Good work by Jock Hobbs. Back to Gerber. Johnny Gerber trying to run his way out of trouble. Carl Duplessis with it now. Chip ahead. Being chased by Michal Duplessis. Bouncing awkwardly there for Kieran Crowley. 
All he could do was to boot into the touch. A very good rugby from the South Africans there. No panic. They just cleared the ball, took their passes, and that's they've gained themselves seen. 35 metres. And that's Louis Mormon getting a clean leave. Last quarter with it. Another drop goal attempt. It's a long one. And is it there? Wait a bit. No. The referee positioned himself very well and can see that it didn't go through the uprights. But it's a pretty good kick all the same. Check, he keeps defying us. You know, I mean, <laughs> we're saying the conditions are so bad. That ball was going up as it went over the past the left hand upright. Yeah, well, small boy coming on the field to get rid of the second ball. And you can see how the rain is really teeming down now. Under it is Big Zippy van der Merwe. Moolman with it. Ferreira back to Buerta. And now Spurta trying to place it, but it goes out on the pull. Not often you see now Spurta do that. Very difficult to judge with the greasy ball and the wind. Yes, I think he might have gone the other way there. He had lots of time. You can read to throw in. There's Andy Hayden. Tapped back by Murray Pierce, but Donald got an awkward one. And the referee wants. The referee said not in straight and asked the non-offending side what they want. Andrew Donald. Fox with it being chased by Bartman. Under it is Kiernis and he stumbles, flipping it back. Pet Small with it. Warwick Taylor was up there, but Ashworth takes over, makes the tackle. ground is really like a paddock now and uh, inside good work by Murray makes it took it from Donald there's Cowboy Shaw and it's slipped forward from his hand referee waiting for advantage and Nasperta being chased by Jock Hobbs manages to get his kick in nonetheless the referee decides it was advantage and they'll take the line out I had a feeling before the game that it would favor the New Zealanders if there was wet weather I don't think it really does because you saw in the drive there Mark Shaw, I, don't, I haven't seen him lose a ball in the drive. That one just popped out of his hands like a piece of soap. Andy Hayden tapping it back there. John Ashworth picking it up. Donald out to Fox. And knocked down there by Yanni Briet. The referee says no advantage. From that knock forward, and they must scrum. Mr. Herrera, no tight hits as yet from either side. Now Spurta with it. And that's a better one. See how that ball skidded there. It didn't bounce, it really skidded. Kieran Crowley back into his 22. And a pretty good kick from Crowley. He was challenged there by Jaka Reiner. I think maybe a better bet for Nas now is to lift the ball a bit. And that's the first penalty for lifting in the lineout. That's quite interesting there. There was the not actually lifting, but supporting with the front row forwards coming in and virtually holding up the jumper in the air. Supporting him before he's touched the ball. That's a good up and under. The Pivana Merva in the thick of things there. But Paul Bartman again is having a good game. Gary Knight doing good work for the New Zealanders. And it'll be a New Zealanders ball. Springboks come looking very good on, on their ball. They're staying up nicely. They're giving Uli Schmidt a good side of the ball. Coming in from Christo Ferreira. Now it's quite a thing against this really great all-black front row forward. Front row. Donald back to Fox. And Fox another up and under. This is going to be the pattern, I think. Simpson it was there, but a slippery ball, Grant Fox couldn't hang on to it, Kiernis went in, and back it comes, that's Donny Gerber, well taken by Crowley, it popped up nicely for him, and are they going to open up, Crowley, Crowley still running, beats Bartman, being chased by Gerber, and he beats Gerber, and into the hands there of Victor Simpson, tackled by Yanni Briet, where is this loose ball coming now, back it comes, Donald, Fox, good little chip there by Fox, Chased by Carlo Duplessis, who 
did quite well to get a boot to it and boot it out on the far side. Yeah, some rather lovely counter attack there from Pierre and Crowley, and Crowley in these conditions. But a bad kick from Donny Kerber. They've got a kick touch. He was inside his 22 meter area and probably looking for a bit too much distance. Well, it's a good opportunity for the New Zealanders. They're lining deep. They're within about 15 meters of their opponent's line. And it is their throw in. Hika Reed, Murray Mextead coming right up to number two in the line out, right in the front there. But back it goes to Andy Hayden at the back. That's something they must have practiced quite a lot. Hika Reed with it now. They want second phase. Uh, but they haven't got it. They were robbed there. Nas Buerta in trouble with Jock Hobbs, and he managed to beat him, managed to get his kick in. Real quick silver stuff. Uh, that was a very good bit of handling. He had to take it on the half volley there with Jock Hob Hobbs breathing down his throat. I think Jock Hobbs has decided that he's going to do his best to upset Nas Buerta and try and force him into an error. Take a read. Murray next here tapping it back. It's a greasy ball. Take a read back for it. But the referee says knock forward. Just that Ferreira too has done a pretty good job there. Cleared the ball well today. Given us a pretty good service apart from this, this last few minutes in the wet. Andrew Donald another up and under. This will test Hunas. It's a difficult one. He gets man and ball at the same time. Jock Hobbs is up very quickly. Craig Green is in there too. And here's the drive. Here's the rolling ball. Can the Springbok stop it? Flippy van der is in there trying to use his bulk and his size and his weight. And the referee says that ball is dead. And it's the Springboks to put it in. That was a brilliant catch by Jock Hobbs. Following up that kick, he took it cleanly above uh, Hennes. I think there must be a little bit of determination in Jock Hobbs just to show the tour selectors that he is the chap who should have the flank forward position. And Christopher Herrera tripping there and caught in possession. Now, this is very dangerous indeed. It's right on the Springbok line, and it was a knock forward. That was oh so close. So one of the New Zealand forwards could have picked up the ball there. Nas Buerta was the man who prevented them from doing it and uh, I think first aid is required by someone so you can see how close the New Zealanders are to the Springbok line so it's still anybody's that game 12 points to nine yes uh, the All Blacks have come back into it now Hobbs is a, it's a great player. He's, he's been around for a long time. He knows where to go on the field. And he's, he set up the pressure on this province side now. It was, a, it was a pretty good kick, but he turned it into a brilliant kick by catching it. And there's eight minutes to go. Eight minutes of ordinary time, plus whatever the referee will decide to add on. And uh, if the New Zealanders ever get a better opportunity than they've got now, I wouldn't be surprised. Of course, it is the spring box to put the ball in. And Uli Schmidt playing his first ever test. I think it's a New Zealand ball. Oh, as you say, yes. It's nasty knock on. Will they try a pushover scrum? Pushover try. There's the shove. They're holding it. And is offside, offside, bang in front of the post. And this will be an absolute gift penalty. The Springbok backs were well behind the last line of feet. They should have actually have been behind their own try line. And they were not. You don't suppose that could conceivably be a penalty try that's been given there, Dave? Yes, it is. It's a penalty try. Christopher Herrera coming around the open side, preventing the ball from being driven over the line, and it's a penalty try being given. Here it is again. You see Christopher Herrera, I thought he was completely, palpably offside, but the referee has decided that if that infringement had not taken place, a try would probably have resulted. So it's a penalty try, which is something one doesn't often see in test matches, and that means that the New Zealanders are in the lead by 15 points to 12. It was converted by Grant Fox. And 15 points to 12. The All Blacks are in the lead. And here is a penalty to the Springboks and a possible opportunity for Nas Buerta to level the scores again. And I think in a game like this, Dave, a result of a draw would be a fair reflection of the play and the weather conditions. Yes, I think that's about right. And, uh, of course, another vital kick for Nas Buerta. It's come, coming from the easier side. 
No, the touch judges looked at each other. Must have been desperately close. Must have been very close indeed. So that is the score as you see it. 15 points to 12 and left for play about six minutes of ordinary time. Grant Fox with the ball. Up goes Murray Pierce to try and have it back. Taken by Hatt Small. Tackle by Max Ted. Ball is loose, but the referee says knock forward and he wants a scrum. Christopher Ferreira is getting very tense now. Three points in it. And referee wants him to scrum on the spot he indicated. Hooker's still not down. That's better. Springboks have it. Chip into the box on the right. Rhinoff chasing it. Craig Green. Did he call for a mark? No. He's kept it in play. And then a good kick by Craig Green over his left shoulder. And there must be some desperately tired big men out there. There's the rain coming down. What a pity to get rain on such a pretty face. Gary Knight. But penalty for obstruction in the line out. And here's Another opportunity for Nasport. Well, he's, he's missed a couple that one wouldn't expect him to miss, but he's a chap who has really got big match temperament. I don't think it'll worry him that this is a vital kick. He'll just go through the motions. The referee explaining to Andy Hayden the reason for the penalty. I want to keep his head down and follow through. 15 meters in from touch. And that's a good one. It's all the way. And the scores are level. And as you can see, only four minutes left for play. Well, Chick, I had the feeling that when the Springboks went into the lead just now, they, they, the game definitely died a little bit. And they let New Zealand get back into this game. I, let's see. I hope that they don't let it die again. They've got back to level. They're going to have to keep, keep playing. They've got five minutes to go, and it could be a long five minutes if they let their game drift off. Yes, well, I think this is the time when territorial advantage is important because if you're on the attack, it means the other side can't get a penalty over through the post. Saltberger under it, helped by Anton Barnard and Fabi van der and Christopher Herrera calling for it. He says, thank you. Back to Nasburda being chased by Andrew Donald and Andy Hayden. Has he found touch? No, nope. he's found Craig Green. And Green hoists it into the air. There's the up and under. Green putting his men on side. And uh, under it was Michal Duplessis, but the referee has said that the New Zealanders were in that 10-meter area. They did not retire. They were within 10 meters of the man catching the ball. Nas Buerta with a penalty, and this, a bit of bad luck there. For Kieran Crowley, he slipped, and the greasy ball went out of his hands and into touch. To put the spring box right on the attack. You can hear the crowd in the background shouting encouraging the spring box nice burner with it and there's the kick for the corner being chased by Carl Duplessis Crowley and Duplessis who'll get there first they both die for it and who's got it it's a try a try to Carl Duplessis in the corner a very good kick for the corner by Nasburter there you see 16 test matches there he is. A very good line-out ball. And Christopher Ferreira, nice, actually battles to control this. I have a feeling that he was looking for the drop and then realized he couldn't because he was covered and just popped it into the corner. And I think Clamp was also expecting the drop. But watch Carl Duplessis outpace Clamp here. Way ahead and gets to it first. Way ahead of Kieran Crowley. Clamp number 14 on the left as well in there. So that really showed the speed of Carl Duplessis who was in New Zealand in 1981. He didn't play the test because uh, Kerry Hermesheis was the left wing, but he got a lot of experience on that tour. Here's Nasburda, Johnny Gerba holding it. Nas, I think, is saying, leave it alone just as I kick it, which he did. And a difficult kick, but it's there. 39 minutes gone. And that was an important kick because it's put South Africa in the lead by six points. Twenty-one points to fifteen. The 
think we might have another look at that try at the end of the game here in Crowley under it is Willy Schmidt helped by Stockberger back to Nasporter he'll take no chances now makes absolutely sure of his touch not a very long one but he's the real little general is this chap captaining his side here for the first time as we've said he has captained his provincial side 51 times that's Warwick Taylor that's a testing up and under under it is nice and the one leaves it to the other to Kiernis, he's caught in possession this could be really dangerous the All Blacks they're an attacking fall there and going desperately Hickory trying to get it back Warwick Taylor with it and the referee's whistle has gone said it was knocked forward and it's the New Zealanders ball on the stopwatch we've had 40 minutes the score the Springboks 21 the New Zealanders 15 injury time and there is the heel but the referee wants it in again Andrew Donald what will they do when they get they get it and a heel against the head the first and only one of the match and uh, Nasbutter plugging the touch line and it's a lovely rolling touch and he's found his touch Nasbert who seems to play better and better with every game he plays see the umbrellas in the crowd it really is raining hard and could that have been the New Zealanders last opportunity there are the statistics South Africa just ahead in the line outs and there's the one and only tight head that we mentioned and a very important one for Uli Schmidt back of the line out tap back by next head John Ashworth couldn't control it and a slight knock forward says the referee he's handled the game pretty well I think yes he's done a good job he's had firm control we were perhaps a little critical just now questioning him on uh, not allowing an advantage but I must say hats off to Mr. Rowland he's handled it very well yep and he wants it in a second time Murray makes it last to go down there and uh, Donald back to Grant Fox so I want to keep it alive chip it into the box there going back for it is Yanni Briet good defensive positional play picked up there by Christopher Herrera kicking for touch and this is a difficult one for Craig Green it bounced just in front of him he tried to keep it in play but it's out and a quick throw in that's and then that, that's dangerous by Johnny Herba and is that the final whistle yes it's the final whistle and the Springboks have won this game by 21 points to 15 after the New Zealanders were ahead 9 points to 6 at half time in the first half we had 3 penalties kicked by Grant Fox and in reply a penalty by Nas Buerta and a drop by Nas Buerta. then since half time we've had 2 penalties and a drop by Nas Buerta and a try by Carl Duplessis to better by Nas Buerta. and for the All Blacks a penalty try given when Christo Ferreira was palpably offside and present, prevented a probable try that was the law said if a try would probably have resulted as if, if the infringement hadn't taken place then it is a try penalty try given under the post and John Fox converted it so the final score 21 points to 15 well Dave Stewart with me former Western Province and South African second five eighths and centre Dave an absorbing game yes it has been a pity that kicks play the role they do but I don't think really expected it any more than that in conditions like these that they were terribly difficult but again nice but, uh, there's no question the man he's got beautiful hands he's got such balance he's got a magnificent kick he just about just a moment let's have another look at this winning try there's nice but, as you say controlling it take it slightly off balance there finds that little gap in the corner that ball must have finished when it stopped must have finished splitting that the angle of the corner there I mean it rolls towards that dead ball line and just stops sufficiently for Carl to get there ahead of Kieran Crowley. They're but both diving for it. And interesting, the referee ran towards the dead ball line so he could get a view across there. Yes. Uh, uh, David, the new boys in the Springbok side, they didn't do too badly. Yes, I think all of them did very well. I think the Springbok loose forward trio did very well. They got better as the game progressed. I think if there was a part of the game that the All Blacks controlled, it was the first 20 minutes, which was understandable. They're far more experienced. But after that, I think the Springboks just about shaded them and deserved the victory. Well, that is the first test to the Springboks. And now we go for the second test to Durban. Uh, and with the Springboks one up, the New Zealanders will be determined. But it's still anybody's series. And it was anybody's day today. We said at one stage, 
a draw would have been a fair reflection of the game, but in the end it was that sparkling try and perfectly placed punt by Nasputa and Carl Duplessis speed. So we look forward to describing the next game to you in Durban today week.